This is chromatic aberration. Let me zoom in so you'll see what I mean. But be warned, it's ugly. Well, that may have been a bit exaggerated, but it really looks bad. Chromatic aberration is an effect shown as magenta and green lines on the contours of objects where there is a very strong contrast. It is due to the optics of the lens not refracting the different colors to the exact same convergence point. And in some cases, not always, it does create those awful lines. This effect is not visible on every picture, of course. It depends largely on the lighting conditions, on the contrast you have between different parts of the image, and it depends also on the lens. All lenses do not show the same chromatic aberration. But it does exist, and I think there are no lenses that do not have any kind of chromatic aberration. So you'll see it sometimes, sometimes you won't. For instance, even in this picture where there is quite a bit of chromatic aberration, if I go to some other parts like this, you can see that the roof on this side doesn't show any special artifact, while on the chimney you do have both the green and the magenta aberration. In some cases you will see only one, but usually it will be both or nothing, like in this case. If you pay attention, this is actually not something that is very unusual. You can see it sometimes in magazines, you can see it in professional pictures released by news agencies, you can see it in movies, in documentaries, because it's not only on pictures that it shows, it can be in videos also. So you might think there is nothing to do about it. But actually, it's very, very easy to remove and we'll just do that. So taking this picture, for instance, I will zoom in again so it will be easier for you to see. It's very, very visible here in the, in the steel part of the anchor. And also on the flag, you have a very uh, marked magenta line on the left and green line on the right and on that flag too, on that flag too, and a little bit on the building, a bit of magenta. So I just go to the lens corrections panel. If the profile tab is not selected, click on it. And the very first option is remove chromatic aberration. So you just have to click it and you can see that all of the, the aberration has gone away. So you can see a little bit of both before and after. I will show you with the split screen. And it's amazing how different the image looks. You can see in different parts of this image. Even here on the wood, it was not very, very visible uh, to begin with. But you can see the difference, actually, between before and after especially the green part. It is not that visible when you see only the before, well, on the wood anyway, but when you can, see, when you see the both versions, it becomes very apparent. And also the, the magenta here on, on the left. Let's check uh, the roof to see if on the chimneys the effect has gone away as well. And you can see it completely disappears. When we check the tree, also, you can see it's very visible, especially the magenta, of course, because there's some contrast with the green of the leaves. So you can see the green border also. But in the after image, you can see that it's completely gone. We'll check also here on the girls. You can see in the hair, the green has completely disappeared. And on the jacket, the magenta line also has vanished. You can see also here with that person, you can see the magenta line here on the right has disappeared. And on the backpack, there was quite a bit of aberration as well, which is completely gone. So that's it. In the vast majority of the cases, you just have to check that box and the problem disappears entirely.
And also an advantage is that it doesn't damage the controls on the image that do not have chromatic aberration, such as here on the roof. You don't see any difference between the before and after picture. So there's really no downside to using that tool. In this second image, apparently there is no chromatic aberration. When I look at the contour of the building, I don't see anything. If I zoom to 100%, I do see some magenta, I think, uh, contour here at the window, but it's not that important. If I wanted to publish the image on the web, for instance, I would definitely leave it that way because nothing would show. But if I wanted to print it, I would definitely check it more in detail because what you don't see necessarily on the screen could show up on the print, especially if it's a, a large print. So I will zoom a bit more and indeed there is some magenta controls and green as well. I will zoom even more to be sure you can see it. Okay, so here it is. You can see magenta, green, magenta, green, uh, magenta, also lighter, green, and still magenta there. Uh, on the bottom of the window, there isn't anything apparently. On the top, you can see a bit of magenta also. Let's click on the Remove Chromatic Aberration. I will check the before and after, and you can see that most of it has disappeared, but there is still some magenta and orange here on the, on the right side. And more importantly, when you look at the bottom of the window here, you can see it's like a very, very light greenish uh, fringe here. But in the after picture, it's a very light magenta fringe. So it removed something, but added something else. Mostly, it's a lot better, of course. So even if you did leave it that way, it would be much better than the original. But as you've guessed, my purpose is to show you how to get rid of what's left of the right side fringe and as well remove the magenta fringe. So since remove chromatic aberration is not enough, we have to go to the manual tab. And here you can see a different section with two two sets of sliders for the two different colors of aberration that you can have, the magenta and the green. And for each, you have the, um, the amount, so the, the amount of D fringe that will be applied, as well as the hue or the color range, which it will remove. So in this case, it will take care of magenta, and you can see that it's a bit between magenta and kind of orange. So first I will move the amount slider and see if we can get rid of that. Usually just a little bit is necessary, but you can see here, it does remove the magenta parts when I move the slider to a two or three value. But when I is keep increasing it, nothing else changes changes basically. The magenta is gone, but we still have the orange stuff. Whether I keep it at 20 or move it back to two, three, it's basically the same. So I leave it at three because you never know when it can affect another part of the image. So you just have to move the slider as little as necessary to, to remove what you need to remove. And you can see also that the very light magenta part here seems to go away when I'm at three. So the bottom of the window, of the window is quite nice now. And we just have to get rid of the orangey uh, color there. So I will move the purple hue, uh, the right slider of the hue 
a bit to the right to include more uh, colors on the red side. So I'll just move it a bit until again. Okay, until now, until everything is gone. You just don't want to overdo it, and I'll show you in a minute why. So that's it for now. We'll just check back in different parts of the picture to make sure that everything is gone, and indeed everything seems to, to have gone. There was a bit of green aberration here, which is now gone, as you can see. If I go to the top of the building, I will make sure that there is no problem either. Yes, there was a bit of magenta there, which has been removed. And uh, in the middle, okay, it is quite fine. There was a bit of magenta here also, which has been moved. Just for now, I will leave it that way. I will go back to 100% and I will show you why you don't want to overdo it. Because you could think that since it doesn't damage uh, the rest of the image when it removes uh, chromatic aberration, you could think that you can go all the way up in every slider and it will be the perfect combination for every picture. But that's not the case. And I'll show you why just now. So for instance, I will set the amount of the purple correction to the maximum and the range of colors also to the maximum to the right and to the left. And you can see a huge, awful gray border that is appearing uh, everywhere on all the controls. So that's why you cannot use the maximum values for those sliders because it will mess up your image. So you just want to do it by changing the sliders as little as possible. And I will now go back okay, to reset my sliders. Okay, so that's how I left it. And that's also why it's important when you do change the, the, these sliders in the manual tab uh, and you focus on a specific part of the picture. In this case, it was only this window. Uh, after you finished, you do need to check the other parts of the, of the picture because in some cases, not always, but in some cases, you improve the parts that you were focused on and at the same time it adds uh, gray artifacts on the contours of some other parts of the image. So in this case there is no problem, uh, so I will leave it this way. If there were some problems I, I would have to go back a bit and reduce the amount of the difference and in those cases, of course, you add back some of the, of the aberration in some parts of the pictures, but you remove the artifacts in other parts. So you have to find the right balance between uh, removing the, the chromatic aberration and adding stuff that you don't want. So in conclusion, you can safely use that remove chromatic aberration by checking the box in each and every one of your images. If there is some aberration, it will remove it. If there is none, it will not mess up your images. So that's the most important thing to, to remember. You can use it safely. And in the worst case scenario, it will not be enough, so you go to the manual settings and you adjust what you have to to correct the image. Just don't forget to review different parts of the photography after you do that to make sure that everything is okay. And that's it, basically. Now that you've seen how easily and effectively you can remove the chromatic aberration, you really have no excuses to leave it in your pictures. Thank you very much for watching this video.
Please click on the like button. It really helps. Please share and subscribe if you aren't already. And also click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I publish my next videos. Thank you and see you soon.